Pair Eyewear's base frame start at just $60, including your prescription, and you can save by using pre-tax FSA and HSA dollars. Plus, get 50% off by using code SIBLING at PairEyewear.com. I got my first pair recently, and let me tell you, I am obsessed, darling. I love the versatility my frames bring to every situation and outfit for me. Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, non-binary people, kids, all starting at $60, including wide frames. Visualize a fantastic pair with Pair Eyewear. Go to PairEyewear.com and use code SIBLING for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in the post-checkout survey. That's Pair, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com, code SIBLING. That's Pair, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com, code SIBLING. Hey y'all, it is me, Monet, and we want to let y'all know that the siblings are coming at you, boo-boo. We are doing Netflix is a Joke on May 5th, 2024 at the Belasco Theater in Los Angeles. So if you're around, you need to get some motherfucking tickets and see your favorite girls do our thing. If you want to see our beautiful faces in pub, in person, please go to um, uh, seethedragqueen.com and get tickets for uh, Sibling Rivalry Live at the Netflix is a Joke Festival. And uh, y'all, I am coming to Joe's Pub. I think the first and second, I think the 16th and 17th are sold out, but we still have tickets for the 18th. So come and see me do my thing, my one woman show, Lifey Lifing, which was legendary at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, live for you in New York City at Joe's Pub on January 16th, 17th, and 18th. And last but not least, I am on tour with Madonna until April. So go to madonna.com and see me in a town near you with the actual Queen of Pop. Today is a couple of days before New Year's. I woke up this morning and um, yesterday, because my, um, yes, I did some errands and Andy came with me. He left his key in my car for, he kept, so we, we do this thing when we leave the house. Anytime I leave the house, I leave with my keys. Whether I'm leaving with or without, I like always have my keys just in case, for whatever reason, I have access to all my things to get into the house with my own set of keys. If we go somewhere together, this motherfucker loves to not bring his keys. And I'm like, bitch, bring your keys. I, what is the problem? Like, bring your fucking keys. You don't know what's going to happen. So anyway, he did bring his keys yesterday. But he ended up leaving them in my car. And I went to the gym this morning. And then when I go to the gym, I put my phone on focus mode. Because I want to, you know, you know the worst thing was when you're at the gym and you get, like, mad calls and mad texts. And like, you go on social media. I'm like, no, bitch, I just want to get my workout done because we had a podcast today. And then so he called me, like, 12 times. I didn't see it. And then I'm just, like, lifting weights. And I just see, because we don't go to the same gym. And he pops up. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm trying to call you. What are you doing? I'm like. Wait, who? Andy. Okay. He's like, I try to call you. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, bitch, what, what do you mean what am I doing? Motherfucker, I'm at the gym. I have a weight in my hand. And he was like, I left my keys in your car. I was like, oh. So he like had to. It was a whole thing. But anyway, I said that to say I went to the gym this morning. <laughs> I don't know why it was a, a very long story about me going to the gym. I went to the Walmart. Uh, to buy a ring light because I don't know where the, I have a ring light at my mom's house, but I just don't know where the ring light is. So I feel like there are now like four ring lights in this house somewhere because every time I come home, mm -hmm. I end up buying a ring light to do the podcast with. Uh, so I've added to my mother's ring light collection, which no doubt she is opening up her own YouTube studio or something. <laughs> maybe maybe my mom's gonna become a TikToker. Imagine um, your mom uh, be, chooses, a, chooses a, uh, to, to, to become a TikToker, and she becomes well, like Jacob a really successful a, one. Jacob has a fantasy with with creating my mother into an influencer. And how? Jacob wants to dress my mom up in like a lot of Gen Z fashion, and do photo shoots with my mother, and and run my mother's social media as the Gen Z, as the Boomer Gen Z. I'm into that. My mother's a very young boomer. She's a very young boomer, though. Boomer starts uh, in the after the war, right? Well, the boomers are the baby after boomers. World War II. Social... I'm imagining. Yeah, let me see. Uh, I think boomer. the boomer cutoff is 61, 1961. Anything after 61 is Gen X. 
Got it. 1946 to 1964. Yeah. And my right mother right was born in 19... And my mother was born in 1962. So she's at the very, basically the tail end of boomers. Got it. So they went to Walmart. Um, so y'all ate us up. They were like, Bob and Monet, they know nothing about Los Angeles. There are so many Walmarts in Los Angeles. I'm sure there are. In LA County, though, there aren't like, like in like Hollywood, in the Hollywood area, Silver Lake, Bur- there, there is one in Burbank. That's what, there's, there's, a, there's a Walmart in Burbank. So we misspoke. There's a Walmart in Burbank. I don't know if they ate it. They probably just announced. I don't know if they ate us. So they're probably just like, oh, there are. They, there were like five comments. Be like, the, uh, like they're they're clearly not from LA. There is one in Burbank. Like, uh, they of course they just moved to LA. They don't did it say all that? Did it say? Did yeah. it was all that? Or was it just like, uh, well, yes. well, we're also we're not from LA. We've made it very clear. I want to say several things. I am from Atlanta. I am a New Yorker. I live in LA. I'm not from any place but Georgia. Georgia is the only place I'm from. And, and um, my LA, my LAism is very minimal. I have lived in LA for three years, and I have barely, barely gone out in LA. I don't, the, uh, New York is the city I lived in the longest out of all the places I've ever lived. You know, as we're coming upon a new year, and, and you and I are both people who don't really believe in resolutions, yada 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 yada. But is there anything like, ex, like, are, are there any? Promises or like or really big goals you want you making for yourself for twenty for twenty twenty four? Not really, no. I'm writing I'm, I'm writing my next uh, stand up show and preparing for that. Work, but I wouldn't call that a resolution of the year. It's just a goal that I have within the year. You know, because mm-hmm. I feel like a resolution is essentially, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but like an attempt to change a pattern, a behavior, or activity within yourself for. Like ongoing, like I don't think in it's, perpetuity. There's something you said. I don't think it's. I don't think it's about changing a behavior. Like you can have a resolution that you, that you don't do. It's just a resolution is like. I think it's more like a declaration that you're promising to yourself for the new year. That that may be changing a behavior. Maybe something starting something brand new. It may be like what 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 resolution could it be that isn't changing behavior? Um, I don't know. Like um, my 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 new year's resolution. My new year's resolution is to start podcasting. Like you're start like you, you, you just because just you like you know what I mean like you're 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 declaring you're doing this thing in the new year. My resol- my new year's resolution is to start gardening. Like so maybe not, maybe, maybe I don't understand resolution. I thought resolution was like to eat healthier, to be on time to things. Those That's can be resolutions, resolutions, but not all resolutions involve changing behavior. Oh, well, I mean I don't do resolutions, so I'm I, not a resolution girl. So I'm you know I don't uh, engage in them, so I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm getting the resolutions wrong. What what it, I don't even know if there's a way to, like, what is a New Year's resolution? Let me, like, it says, it doesn't even seem to be a way. A New Year's resolution is a tradition most common in the Western world, but also found in Europe, in which a person resolves to continue good practices, change an undesired trait or behavior, accomplish a personal goal, or otherwise improve their behavior at the beginning of the calendar year. Yeah. Um, I always, but, in my, in I like, think resolutions are good. I think New Year's resolutions are good, actually. I mean, I don't think they're unhealthy. Like some, some people have like anti New Year's resolutions. I think those are people who let bitch, who are like are, have have tried to resolute, uh, who have tried to be to have to, who have tried to have resolutions and they failed at them. It's like, ugh, I can't with resolutions. But I I agree with you. I'm like setting a goal for yourself for the new year. I don't think that's bad, and I don't think it should be frowned upon. I mean, what I would have liked to do. Something I want to do in the new year. I'm not saying it's a resolution, um, because then when I don't do it, I'm gonna feel bad about myself. I want to start. I want to. Uh, I want to uh, have a green thumb. Like I want to have plants in my home. I want to. I, I ain't trying to plant shit outside. Like like a garden. Like Shea Kool Aid has like a garden. She like planting tomatoes and she's harvesting shit and she's like using compost and manure. I'm not trying to be that girl, but I want to like. I want to invite some plants into my home in, in, in the new year. It sounds like you uh, like to have news resolutions, but you just don't want to call them news resolutions. No, I mean, I don't do this every year. This is something I'm, I'm, I'm saying this year. I'm, I've not had a resolution in many years or a plan to do Got something. It. But this, this year, year first, I'm like, this now that year I, I, trying I, to have a resolution states, in a while. Like, I want to have, like, greenery. I want to, like, have some, some greenery in my home. Yeah, I mean, that sounds exciting. You know, I mean, for you, plants don't particularly excite me. Do you remember in the pandemic when everybody became a plant parent? Uh, everybody was naming them. Everybody was like, ha- people went plant 
crazy in the. the yeah, I want to call it the depression. I wonder how those plans are. The, I wonder the, how those plans are now. In the pandemic. I wonder how those plans are now. I know. And when a plant dies, do you bury it like a like like a like a pet, or do you, you just, just throw just it compost. away? I assume you just compost it. I mean, I personally kept telling people: do not get pets. Do not get. Well, you can get plants, but don't get pets during the pandemic. I wonder what's up with all these pandemic pl- pets. Like now that the world of like, like one. how does everyone how does everyone how does everyone feel about their idea to get a pandemic pet? Do you do you do you or do you still stand by that decision? I do. I love I love little Colleen. She's my little girl. I was I was talking to Andy about this the other day, and in, 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 with our last podcast talking about parent um, dog owners and, and cat owners and stuff. And Andy's like, if he is if if Potato died, he would be distraught. He would have to take like weeks off of work. And I was like. Okay. I was like, if Colleen died, would I be sad? I'm not taking weeks off of work. Like, I will be sad. I'm not going to like, I'm not, I'm not like canceling work and canceling gigs because Colleen died. That's just not how I feel. And he was like, I mean, if people in my family die, so I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> like, is that horrible? I don't think if someone in my family dies, I'm still going to work. I'm like, I, I gotta go to work. Yeah. I'm gonna be mourning, but I'm gonna be mourning and like Filing paperwork, answering emails, <laughs> telling jokes, <laughs> dancing, saying Madonna. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and I'm like, I'm like, are we just, are we just, are we just devoid of feeling? Are we fuck? Are we bad people? I was like, no, I, I, I don't think, I don't think canceling my entire week of work because Colleen died is is weeks, weeks. He was like, oh, he was like, I would have to take weeks off. He's like, I have to take. I was like, I was like, go off. I was like, that is not my experience. That's not how I would behave. Okay, y'all comment below. Well, how would you, if your pet died, how would you react? Like, are you taking weeks off of work? Are you taking a day off of work? Are you taking a month? I'm very curious because, again, pet owners out here are really, especially dog owners, are really wild. I'm very curious. I'm not judging anyone who does it. Do you remember that clip of uh, New York arguing with someone online? And I think her dog died or her cat died. New York Tiffany Pollard, her her, uh, her animal passed away while she was filming a TV show. Mm-hmm. And she was really distraught about it, like really upset. And understandably so. But this guy kept being like, you need to chill out. He was like, you're out of control. It's just a... She said, this is my daughter. And she was like, well... He was like, well, so basically, I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was, but she was like, obviously very distraught because her pet passed away. And he was like, so it's just a dog. Nobody care. Literally just a dog. That's to me, that's too much. Yeah, I agree. That's like, wild. I, you know, people, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's how I thought to say. I was like, I don't know about all that. Like, like years ago, years ago, my, this is obviously a very different scenario, but years ago, my aunt passed away. Mm-hmm. And, my my mother was very very close to my aunt Stephanie. They were like cl- the closest in age, and she was like those are twin. They were like very very close. She passed away very young, very unexpectedly, mm-hmm. randomly, out of nowhere. And someone in my mother's life was like it was. It had been like over a year. My mom was like just like sad one day, and she was like, "Oh my god, I miss my like I miss my sister." And then whoever it was, I don't know if it was Corey, was like uh, was like you still sad about your sister dying? And she was like, yes. Yes, I'm still sad. What? And then later on, years later, his sister passed away. And he was like, you know what? I'm sorry. Right. I am very sad that my sister's dead now. Like very, very sad. And it's been over a year and I'm still incredibly sad about it. So like, I understand what you're, what you're, what you were going through. So if someone's pet passes away, like, um, Caitlin, crackers, Caitlin, was living with me when her childhood pet died. And she was going through it. Like, through it. Isn't Kayla from D.C.? Baltimore, yeah, Baltimore, I think. Oh, my God, we're going to the DMV. Her business. Kaylin's from the middle of the East Coast. I mean, I don't think they're saying where someone's from. I don't like, know. Not, I'm not Kaylin. I don't know. But Kaylin is you know, sometimes a little private about her information, though. So that's why. Oh, okay, sure. Anyway... Um, <laughs> not Bob doxing Caitlyn. Like Caitlyn, it's not bro- doxing. I was laughing. That sounded like like when Kamika when someone be like Kamika's from New York. Don't be hey, <laughs> and it's like New York. Okay, how many Kamikas have you met in New York? Right. But, but also like we're but, but also like when, whenever so like whenever like my mother's from Mississippi, 
All you're saying is Martha's from Mississippi, but like, like, you're Martha's not saying her there. home address. There are a lot of Martha's. You know, first of all, you do not know. First of all, there aren't a lot of people in Mississippi, let alone Martha's. Okay, what do you mean a lot of people? Hold on, hold on. What do you is think Mississippi is? Some extremely populated population. state. How oh. big do you think Mississippi is? Big, there are probably three million people. people. That's big. Monet, there are more people in New York City than there are in the sure, are more but people that, in that, that, Brooklyn. That doesn't matter. There are 3 million people. Also, as you saw about St. Lucia. St. Lucia, is, St. Lucia has 450,000 people. That's small. 3 million people. Yeah, we, know St. we know St. Lucia's small. We, we, we've been knew that. But as far as states in the United States go, Mississippi is one of the one of the least populated. Mississippi is not a big state. No one's arguing that, any, but it's still a lot of people. Any imagination. Jacob, then, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob's telling you to roll down the river. So what you gonna do is you go, you go, you go well, shut. It's your also mouth. time for a break. Yeah, no, Jacob, so you're gonna, it's, it's time for an ad so break. You gonna listen to Jacob? You're gonna shut your mouth, and we're gonna go to, go to a commercial. Okay. <laughs> Well, Monet's acting, like, Monet's acting like Mississippi is, is Monet acting like Mississippi is Texas, I'm California. Not I never said New that. York, okay, to Florida, quote you, Georgia. You, to quote you, that is literally, I literally did not say those things. Monet is like, there's, that is not what there's, I'm no, there's bajillions. Three million people, people is a lot of people. Mississippi is basically California. Mississippi okay, has the I'll most. I bet you this. I bet you this. I bet you this. I bet you there are more Marthas per capita in Mississippi than Kamikas per capita in New York State, in New York City. You don't know. You don't I know that, that. You can't confirm that. I will bet that, bitch. How do you plan on confirming it? I don't know how to confirm that, but I know it's true. Based on what? Based on your feelings. This, just I can Google how many Kamikas. <laughs> you you think there's a database of 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 uh, someone online has compiled all the Kamikas in New York City? But I bet you no, no, no. But I bet you they've they've compiled a database about the amount of Marthas in the in the United States versus Kamikas. I bet that. Based on Just what? Based on the fact that if I go to a souvenir store, I can find a Martha keychain. I will never find a Kamika keychain. Never. How many Marthas have you met? That's because it is How not a Martha's common you? name. How many Marthas have you met? I I met like three or four Marthas. Name one that's not my mom. Quickly. Mar Martha P. Johnson. You met her. I don't met her, but I know that that is a Martha I know. Name one you met. No one you met. And he's and and he's aunt Martha Martha Short. That would, they, I went mm, to Crystal okay. with her last year. We'll have to confirm that. Okay, we'll confirm it. Text confirm him. That. Call him. Because why was your first one Martha P. Johnson? Because her name is Marsha, by the way. Her name is Marsha. Her name is Marsha P. Johnson. Oh, yeah. Just, many, just so we're clear. Okay, question. How, how many, how many Kamikas so, do you know? So, how many Kamikas do you know? The, wait, no. Freeze, freeze. So consider that the first Martha you named was actually a Marsha. <laughs> How many, so I'm, I'm starting to wonder. I'm starting to wonder what Andy's aunt's name is. How many? How many, how, how many Kamikas do you know? Five. You do not know. You know five. All Kamikas, from Bob? New York. Yep, all from New York. You know five Kamikas. All from New York. Bob, you are so full. There's so much. You're so full of shit. It is seeping through your fucking eyeballs. Kamika P. Johnson. Kamika <laughs> Short. <laughs> <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> I'm screaming at Martha P. Johnson. I, I don't know. Why, I don't know why my brain. I bitch. I, I sound like George Santos in that fucking Z way interview. <laughs> I'm screaming at Martha P. Johnson. This is that's crazy. I cannot believe that's I said that. Wild. I can. I am so embarrassed by that. And me too. <laughs> Incredibly. <laughs> Incredibly. I am so embarrassed. Now, now, Monet or Martha Exchange, however. <laughs> um, also, they, uh, the lady who helped, lady who helps clean our house, her name is Mika too. The the lady that what? Lady who helps clean my mother's house. Her name is Mika. Is Mika? It's not Kamika. You don't know what the first. You just is. changed it. You just said it. You you just you just said it's Kamika. Her name is Mika. Then, then you looked off the camera and you like Mika, bitch. We all saw. It. Can you please rewind the tape? What's the name of the lady who helps clean the house? It's what? Thank you. Kamika. Mm. So, so, so convenient that we, we can't hear your mom now. So convenient. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of Mikas in the world, honey. Anyway, <laughs> stop fucking wagging. Okay, y'all. So, <clears throat> I'm going to change gears a little bit because today's episode. You changed, yeah, change gears. I told you to. Change gears because Jacob told you to change gears. That's why you changed your gears. It's about sleep. <sighs> Okay, first of all, before we jump, well, okay, Bob, are we going to commit to changing our voices to, to sound like this, or are we going to keep uh, your fucking raggedy, bangy-ass tone? 
Oh, first of all, there's something else Monet said today that was so random. And I was like, not Monet. What did I do? I can't remember. I can't remember what it was. Um, it was something that you said. I was like, see, this is why you, this is why you, you call me hood. Monet is, Monet is the kind of bitch that be, that, that be in the street talking about some Valentine's with an M. <laughs> and you know you be saying Valentine's. <laughs> Monet is a Valentine's bitch. Monet say happy Valentine's. <laughs> You have never. I have. You laugh because you know you say that. I have never said. Hey, hey y'all! Happy Valentine's, y'all. <laughs> never said. I never said. She drives me crazy. I hate when people say Valentine's. I hate it so much. I don't know why, but I just don't. I just it drives me crazy. Um. So, y'all, today's episode is about sleep. Now, before we jump in, well, actually, wait, this is part of it. So, Bob, have you ever done a sleepy time podcast? No, is that what it's called? Sleepy time? No. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the official name is, but I have. Um, last year, like a sleep aid podcast. Yeah, a sleep aid podcast. There we go. Um, Whose podcast was it? It was Better Sleep, and I did their Pride episode last year, and it was about um, um, me talking about a Pride march with these two lesbians. And then, so when you do those takes, y'all, you would read. Is that a real story? Uh, no, it was it was it was fictionalized. Okay. And um, when you're reading these stories, you go you, you go to a studio. I went to and Patty and I were on the road. So I was at a studio in Madison, Wisconsin, and it was for like four hours. And when you're reading the story, they don't want your voice to change very much. Like they want you to have dynamics and they want you to have inflection, but you still want to tell the story because when people are listening to go to sleep, they don't want too much change they want you to change a little bit but not enough that it would distract them if they're falling asleep uh i don't know that i have the capacity or the desire to do that (laughs) um but i certainly can commit to speaking at a lower volume okay keeping my decibel low okay um yeah so um do you have currently now as, as it stands today do you have a bedtime routine um, no, not really. I mean, when Jacob was out of town, I was sleeping in the living room, which felt really nice. I actually really enjoyed that. It was very, very comfortable. Wait, what? Wait, like, where, where in the living room? On the couch? On the, on the longer couch with that, uh, with those, like those special pillows that we have. Ooh. Huh? And, and it was really comfortable and I would just lay there. And, um, I also like to fall asleep while other people are watching TV. I like for someone else to watch like a TV too. show in, oh the, god, like in the room. Too. Oh my god, I like that too. Then I'll fall asleep while they're watching TV. I enjoy that. Um, but I wouldn't call it a routine, though. No, it's like not something I do over time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I mean, so before when I was, oh, hold on, hold on, are you okay? What's going on? Oh, I thought she was. Oh, I thought she was coughing. Um, I'm trying to stop Uncle Steve from interrupting the podcast. <laughs> she what? She's trying to stop Uncle Steve from interrupting the podcast. Oh, um, she got up quick. I thought she got the Holy Ghost. She, she <laughs> jumped up, honey. <laughs> well, she's moving. She's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> I would love to go with your mom to church, and I just start shouting, and she was like, "Oh, Kevin, Kevin, caught the spirit." Well, my mother watches church on television. Mm-hmm. She doesn't go to the actual churches, um, but she does watch church on TV though. So you you have to you'd have to catch the Holy Ghost in my mother's bedroom. I could bitch. I, really I, 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 I can catch the Holy Ghost anywhere, honey. Bitch, I will catch the Holy Ghost right here. Well, the Holy Ghost will find you wherever you are. The Holy she Ghost is. doesn't just exist in the, in the church. Mm-hmm. She's everywhere. She, I, 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 I heard like the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost is giving they them or it. <laughs> You know, the blessed three in one. Do you know? Do you know what the blessed three in one are? You mean the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Yes, come on, blessed three in one. It's but it's but it's but who says blessed three in one? You mean the Holy Trinity? Yeah, but um, I think in in certain religions they say the blessed three in one. They, they, every every religion has the same. Well, Catholic based religions have the same, or Christian based. Mean Judeo Christian. Yeah, Judeo Christian have the same. Some called it the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Three and One. The, the, there's like all of these different fucking names. So. I've never heard the term Blessed Three and One, but I just used a little bit of context clues based on what we're talking about, and I assumed it was the Holy Trinity. And I mean, I, mean, I grew up going to church one day, so yeah. I, I mean, well, I don't go to church now. Believe, 
<laughs> you 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 make it I, very hard to I believe. Think if, I think if anything, I think if anything, the way I behave is is probably evident that I certainly went to church, which is why I feel the way I feel about church. But yeah, I used to go to church uh, of my own volition when I went when with no one prompting me, just get dressed, wake up on Sundays, every Sunday and every Wednesday night and go to church by myself when I was in like maybe eighth grade. Into okay, grade, you weren't the only one, bitch. I used to go to church. I used to go to, go to church by myself as well. I have a whole thing in high school. I went to church by myself. You, you got know? paid. You got paid to be at church. You were no, literally not. paid to be Songs there. of Solomon was not paid, bitch. You, I paid. You've never been paid. You've never been paid I to had, be at church. I have had church jobs when I was going exactly. to when I go to church by myself. Exactly. It was not paid with Songs of Solomon. It was. You were, it was. I was you were paid to be part of Songs of Solomon. You were praising the Lord. You were praising money. You can't worship two masters. And you chose yours. The nigga, yeah. You can't worship two masters. You can't worship me. Worship me to quote. You to chose, quote you chose to worship me. me. Worship me. You chose to worship Benjamin Franklin, honey. Anyway, and honestly, when you was doing it, you was probably worshiping George Washington. Because I doubt you were getting Benjamin Franklin's darling. Um, Monet, did you have a bedtime routine? Let me tell you. So, um, I your voice, please, please lower your voice. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you. Um, my bedtime routine. So typically, so before before when I was a single girl out here in these streets. I would always fall asleep with the TV on. Like I'm gonna fall asleep with the TV on girly, but um, since I am partnered up, my partner can't fall asleep with the TV on. So I be in. So I be in. Uh, so when we when we go to bed together, like the room is quiet. But I need I need to have white noise. Can you sleep? Can you sleep like dead silent? I cannot sleep like dead silent. I have looked right now. When I tell you that I have no conditions. That I need to fall asleep. Mm. I can fall asleep in the dead of silence. I can fall asleep in the in with the sun blasting in my eyes. I can fall asleep in a completely pitch black room. I can fall asleep on a pe- on a plane, on a train, in a box with a fox. Like I have, I have, I have no problems going to sleep ever. I never have problems sleeping. My only thing is dead silence. Please Anything lower your else? voice. Please lower your voice. Please lower your voice. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. My only thing is dead silence. I can sleep in, on all the other conditions you mentioned, but if it's like dead silent, I cannot sleep like that. That bothers me. I cannot sleep like that. I don't mind white noise. Sometimes I listen to Two Birds by Trixie Mattel to go to sleep. <laughs> your voice, please. Your voice, please. Oh, yeah. So my bedtime routine. So typically, we if we watch TV on the couch, we'll go upstairs. Even when I'm at hotels or gigs, I get my little water, my little water flosser. I floss. I receive. I brush my Invisalign and then I put them in to go to bed. And that's usually my bedtime routine. That's like my only routine thing I do. Sometimes I brush my teeth hours before going to bed. And I'll just do it like as I'm winding down. So I don't really call it part of my bedtime routine. Oh, no, Um, I can't trust myself because I will have snacks until it's time to go to bed. That's the thing. I don't have, you know this about me. I don't have snacks in my house. There is the only way that I can eat at home is to order food. Wait, say it again. You, You don't have what in your house? snacks okay so when you come over to my house y'all let me tell you this is more yeah well bob. you'd have snacks this is this is more of a bob by being a hood ass bitch bob will bust through <laughs> i i i knock on the door wait for you to answer it let's be clear about that Bob will bust through my house and he was like hey monet bob's first stop is he will open a cabinet in my kitchen i said damn we don't have no snacks in here bitch like some of hood please, your voice your voice please your voice please your voice and he'll please. open a cabinet in my kitchen and be like damn girl you know damn bitch you have no snacks in here Monet, what, 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 what am i supposed to eat well i do that with your permission i asked you a long time ago and you said make yourself at home i don't bust into your house i knock on the door i ring your doorbell your and i wait for voice, you to your answer voice, your voice is getting a little you're getting a little high I wait for you to answer. I walk through the door and then I take off my shoes, which is another part that you skipped out on. I greet the the uh, the masters of the house, Colleen and Potato. <laughs> and then I go to the cabinet. And yes, I will look for snacks. <laughs> and if you don't have them, I do call you out. Yes, I do. <laughs> Quite frankly, yes, I do. Because you should have snacks for me at your house. <laughs> Not that I have them for you at my house. And then so when Bob comes over, he came over for Christmas, and then everyone, I'm like, I ask everyone if they if they have something to drink. So I'm making it so everyone has to drink. Bob pours himself a glass of lemonade, and y'all, I don't know if y'all ever seen Bob in public. Bob will drink a 16 ounce bottle of water in maybe three seconds, and he will could continue to crush the bottle as he consumes it. <laughs> <And> so, anytime <laughs> Bob drinks a liquid, he will drink it 
within 0.3 seconds flat. So he takes the glass and he's walking to the living room. He's like, girl, I don't know why I'm acting like I'm not going to drink this. He just chugs the whole glass of lemonade. I also want to point out that I crush the bottle so there's more room in the trash can. Like I do that, I, I do that too. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like I'm. You're like I'm. Cr- like I'm cr- crushing a can on my forehead. <laughs> That's what it feels I also like. crush. I crush cans too. I crush cans. I crush bottles before I put them away because it creates more room and, then, and you have to make less trips or you don't have to take your trash out so early. Bottles Listen, take up a lot it of makes space. Sense. It, makes, it makes sense, girl. You don't tell me. Andy cannot. He he cannot figure out that thing. You know, let's take a break. I'll tell you about my um my recycling habits. No matter how you may be starting your year, when you use the Secure Chime Credit Build a Visa credit card, you can build your credit scores with on time payments for everyday purchases. There is no annual fee or credit card check to get started. Major bonus. With a Chime checking account, you can get paid up to two days earlier. With a qualifying direct deposit, you can get access to your money sooner than others. And Chime offers fee free overdraft with SpotMe. Overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. Just set up a qualifying direct deposit, sign up for SpotMe, and Chime will spot you up to your limit when you make a purchase that exceeds your balance. Ditch the monthly fees, girl. Chime gives you access to up to 60,000 free free ATMs, and that's more than the top three national banks combined. And you can easily find one near you on the Chime app. With Chime, you can send and receive money, pay friends through Chime, no matter what bank account they may use. You know when you're like not compatible with somebody you're trying to send money to and it's a whole to-do? Mm-mm, not with Chime. Start building your credit. Open a Chime credit checking account with at least $200 qualifying direct deposit to get started. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members of the FDIC. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal and over-the-counter advance fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Spot me, eligibility requirements, and overdraft limits apply. What's your vision for the new year? Is there a goal that you've been working toward for a long time and you're switching things up in 2024? Whatever your vision for the year is, let Pair Eyewear bring things into focus. Pair Eyewear's base frame start at just $60, including your prescription, and you can save by using pre-tax FSA and HSA dollars. Plus, get 50% off by using code sibling at PairEyewear.com. I got my first pair recently, and let me tell you, I am obsessed, darling. Pair is budget-friendly without compromising on style or quality. It's an affordable and easy way to change up your look with those top frames starting at just $25. I love the versatility my frames bring to every situation and outfit for me. Pair provides a curated selection of base frames for men, women, non-binary people, kids, all starting at $60, including wide frames to fit every face. If you got a big head like me, and baby, I got a big old head, you might need a wide frame. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Find your fit right from home with virtual try-on and then switch up your look in a snap with top frames that start at just $25. New designs drop every month, including fun collabs. And they have free standard shipping and flexible 30-day return policy so you can find your perfect fit. Visualize a fantastic pair with Pair Eyewear. Go to PairEyewear.com and use code SIBLING for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that Sibling Rivalry sent you in the post checkout survey. That's pair, P A I R, eyewear.com, code sibling. That's pair, P A I R, eyewear.com, code sibling. So I would. Well, no, let me tell you because I've, I've learned something in life. Oh, I've learned something in life is this. Something someone told me years ago is this, and I believe it's true. Only Republicans <laughs> hide their trash cans. <laughs> Someone pointed that to me years ago. I don't care what level of wealth. Something about is only Republicans hide their trash cans. Can you can you elaborate? People don't understand what that means. Because I didn't get so, it. So when you see a trash can and it's in a drawer, it's <laughs> under the sink. Their trash can. They have a tiny little trash can <laughs> that's stored inside of a cabinet. That's a Republican household. <laughs> now, if they, you're Monet. People are trying to sleep. People are trying to sleep. 
Now, if you are also hiding your refrigerator, <laughs> you're basically running a Republican super PAC at this point. You are running. You're a lobbyist. You're a gun. You're a gun lobbyist. You're you're a lobbyist for the NRA. This is so ridiculous. So I come to Monet's house where she is hiding her trash can, <laughs> her recycling. <laughs> you're hiding it. If someone has to ask you where the trash can is, you're hiding it. So Monet hides her fridge and her trash can. I have so y'all. I have a panel ready for it. Those of you who don't believe me, think back about think those of you who have Republican parents, think where the <laughs> trash can is. Just think about that. I have first of all, I grew up anyway. I have pan, I have a panel ready fridge. If you don't want a panel ready fridge, it's, it's a fridge when you buy it, and instead of like it, on you, <laughs> instead of having like a traditional fridge, you buy it so they can make it. They can put the wood on it, so it like your voice, your voice. So, so your, so your, so your fridge is part of your cabinetry, and that's how my drawers are too, and my dishwasher. That so it's not that's not weird or Republican. You're so wild. I didn't say it was weird. <laughs> I said it was Republican. I mean, about half the country is Republican, including you and according, including Peanut and uh, not Peanut Potato and Colleen. Apparently, we were talking about this. Like our pets. Do you think your cat has liberal views? I, mean, I was just about to say, my cat is liberal and my cat is black. Potato is a white pet. Have you noticed this? Is he? Potato is white. Well, I mean, I, I and now know he's getting a black experience because so so for example, Andy. I mean, Andy raised the dog fine, but Potato has a lot of had a lot of uh, training to do when I got in my hands on him. And now that I got my hands on him, Potato's having a black experience. Like for example, before Potato would like. His bowels and his urinary tr uh, track were a little. Uh, your voice, your voice. Were a little. Um, they needed some taming. Let's just say that, and he doesn't do that anymore. And he'll do something like. What do you mean, like pooping in the house? Like he would like poop and pee in the house sometimes. Was he a puppy? No, it wasn't a fucking puppy. How old is Potato? Potato is three now. What? Well, okay, to be clear, I don't think that pooping in the house is a white dog thing. I don't. I. I don't feel in my heart. I mean, the training around it is yes. Yeah, I. I have friends I mean, that have puppies, and when they have them, they, the puppies don't do that. They train the dog from the time it's way small. I mean, Jacob. Jacob has. Jacob grew up with two. Well, two dogs. One of them was. Well, has gone on to glory. Oh, wait, did they both go on to glory? Well, one of the dogs has gone on to glory. But there was no that those dogs didn't poop and pee in the house. I, I think this I think that's a that's an Andy thing. I don't think that Bob, I'm 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 so sorry I'm about to say this, Caldwell. So we actually got the dogs when they were three and we, we got them from a black couple who had twins, so they didn't have time to take care of the dogs. So we adopted the dogs from them. So they actually trained the dogs and then we adopted oh, them. Is that, is that why they don't poop in the house? Well, in my in my experience of people I mean, I don't have that much experience with white people, white people with dogs. Who do I know? Who are white people do I know with dogs? The only person I really know who's an animal owner is you, Assad. Uh, and there's got to be more. I just don't really know. I just don't really know about their relationship with, with their animals. So anyway, potato, like potato, when potato goes outside, potatoes, any, if potato steps a foot outside, his paws are being washed because then you're not going to step outside in grass, on gravel or whatever the fuck, and then jump on my couch with your dirty paws. So potato now, he's, his, his body gets cleaned every time he comes inside. And if potato is like, is that a, is that a black thing? Yeah, all all we, my we black did, friends with dogs do that. When I had a dog, we did not wash Grizzly's feet every time I came in the house. That sounds. Oh, all my black friends do that. Every black friend I know that have a dog. All of your black friends do that. Yeah. Well, all my black friends, I have dogs. Cats, no, because they don't go outside. What? Yes. You're telling me I that will... every single one of your black friends has a dog. They wash their dog's feet. That's there's every of... single time they walk. There. That is three of them. I don't believe. I do not believe you. But I grew up in one of the blackest states in America. I just want to be very clear about that. I, uh -huh. I in fact, wait, let me just say this: Georgia is such a black state that I didn't even know black people were my people are sleeping. People are sleeping. I didn't even know black people were minorities. Until I kept being like, what y'all mean minority? Everybody's black. I have never met a person who washes their dog's feet. And I grew up in one of the blackest states in America. Cannon, I have never met a single person who washes their dog's feet. Cannon, Dewan, um, who else? I have a black, another black friend that has a dog. Cannon, Dewan, and someone else. Arcia just got a puppy, but I don't know about that. Arcia well, just got another puppy. Maybe that's because your dogs are walking in a 
to turn my game down? Maybe that's because your dogs are walking in the disgusting city of New York. Maybe, but even to here, it's not it's not disgusting. But I mean, I'm just used to that. But 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 think about oh, it. Oh, you know the the tidy L A. L A. known for his clean street. But also, but think about it. If a dog is outside in dirt, digging and shitting, or like in grass, they're gonna come and jump on the couch that you're putting your face on, and you're on your couch. That's nasty. My dog didn't. Go, my dog never got on the couch. Well, see, well that's the thing. Potato does. Potato's a little dog. Potato gets on the couch. Well, I didn't have a dog get on the couch. Well, my also, dog sat on the ground. When I grew up with dogs in St. Lucia, I, coming to America was the first time I saw dogs inside, which I understand. Like, New York is cold. A dog cannot stay outside all year round. But I grew up with my dogs. They never came inside. Like, well, in Georgia, there are outside dogs and there are inside dogs. It's really all about how the person raises them. Georgia never really gets cold enough to, like, your dog can't be outside. I mean, at least Atlanta just never really gets that cold. Um, but I, I don't agree personally with like outside dogs. I do. Like if you're, if you're cold, your dog is cold. That's not true. If though. it's listen, 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 have you ever seen dogs that are shivering indoors where it's not even cold? Shivering. That's the thing. Like have you ever seen, a have you ever seen moments shiver. where, you, where you're, shiver. have you ever, I'm, have you ever seen dogs that are just shivering and it's not even cold and you feel like you're like, I couldn't possibly, there, dogs get cold as easily as some breeds of dogs, some, not all, but some breeds of dogs get cold just as easily as you do, if not easier. Yes, yeah, some breeds of dogs. But again, example, a chihuahua. A chihuahua is shaking not because it's cold. That's just how they are. They're just how they breathe. They're nervous. They have nervous shakes. So um, if you're having a dog outside, of course, it should be a dog for outside. Like, I don't think like a fucking Chinese crusted should live outside. They don't have any fur. But certain like a German Shepherd, a Rottweiler, like a St. Bernard, those dogs can be outside. They can be outside dogs. I mean, I don't I don't believe in leaving your dogs outside, uh, especially if you live Sleepy in a place voices, where it's please. Sleepy voices, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Especially if you live in a place where you are, where it's cold. Uh, Chihuahuas are the tiniest breed of dog. They produce a lot of energy because of their fast metabolism. These dogs burn three times as many calories as other canines. This can cause shivering or shaking so that they're not nervous. It's because they're burning calories at an alarming rate. Yeah, so chihuahuas just shake. They're not shaking because they're cold. Anyway, well, I don't know. know. Chihuahuas, can, chihuahuas can also shake because they're cold, too. I know. Yeah, sure, they can. I'm not saying that they can't shake. I'm saying, but if you see like a chihuahua outside, inside in a nice warm room, they're not shaking because they're cold. They're shaking because they're, they have all this fuck. what you just said. Anyway. <clears throat> have you ever tried to meditate? I meditate. Yeah, I meditate. Do you not like, often, but I do meditate. You do. Yeah. What do you do when you meditate? I'm so I'm so intrigued about meditation because I don't get it. So when I used to meditate religiously, what I was doing was I would paint my nails, and while my nails were drying, I would take the time to meditate because. I kept painting my nails and ruining them and getting my nails. I don't paint my nails anymore, but I would get nail polish on everything and it get all messed up. And I'm like, well, this is the perfect time for me to. So I take my nail polish off every night and every morning I would paint, I would paint my nails and meditate. I did this for like maybe five months. And while I'm there, I just think about my life. I think about my day. I think about people. I set intentions for myself. I set goals for the day. I come up with my itinerary in my head or sometimes I just try my best to just blank out as best I can. I've also done guided meditations on podcasts that do guided meditations and stuff. Is an intention just a short form resolution? Well, like my intention today is to is to smile more or to make people happy or to my intention for today is to exude joy. My intention for today is to be um, to be more um matter of fact and to him and haul less that kind of stuff so the intention is just like a a shorter version of a resolution like a resolution is a more long term uh, an intention is short term like a day whereas a resolution is for the next year well i don't know that resolutions necessarily revolve around a, a calendar year i think it's just specifically a new year a new year's resolution i think it's the new year uh, my intention is to work out more for the new year which is 365 days yeah, yeah, that's a New Year's resolution. But I'm saying I don't think that the resolutions are 
necessarily bound to a year unless it is a New Year's resolution. Yeah, so I'm saying are New Year's resolutions long-term versions of intentions? Well, I imagine you could set intentions for any amount of time. You know what I mean? But I, I was, for me specifically on those meditations, I was setting daily intentions. But I don't think the intentions are necessarily about a daily, a day-to-day thing. That was just for me and my daily intentions. I guess I've never heard of a long-term intention. I know my, my intention is to work out for the next year. I've never heard that. My I, no, Normally when I hear intentions, they're like, yeah, like when I was going to take a trip, I had an intention, well, a, 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 a psycho drug trip. What I imagine someone can say, I intend to, I intend to be a, a nicer, calmer person in general. I'm setting intentions for myself and how you I want to do be that my one. Partner. You should try that one. Not interested. Your volume, please. Please, your volume. Yes. You just woke up three people. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what are you playing? <laughs> what is um, Mo- Monet, have you ever tried to meditate? Um, thanks, thanks, for uh, Monet. You know, if if you're if you're asking me questions for the sole intention of me to ask you, you can just answer your own question. You don't have to try to trick me into asking you the question. Well, this is a podcast. You can, just, can you? you can damn, just, damn nigga, can you engage me? What your volume, please? Sorry, can, yeah. Can you say that again in a sleepy voice? Yes, please. Can you please be calm? You just woke up several of our listeners. Um. Yeah, nigga, I hear you. Can you engage me? Damn. I'm happy. I'm happy to engage you. You know, I feel like I've been quite engaging with you. I'm just not asking you the questions you want me to ask you. This is not an interview. So if you have questions, if you have answers you want to bring to the stage, then I think that it can help you to just, you know, just offer the information instead of desperately begging me to give you attention. And I know how much you love my approval. <laughs> but your approval rating is your volume. Poor favor. Um, I think I talked about this on the podcast before. I I found out from my doctor that I, me and like three percent of the population, like only require five to six hours of sleep. It's a very rare thing. Like if I get more than that, I like sure it's fine. Sometimes it makes me more tired, but like five hours of sleep, I'm like, oh my god, I feel amazing. My life is that really five percent of the population? Three percent of the population. Is that real? That's real. Look it up. Interesting. I mean, I also don't require that much sleep, so but I don't think I'm. I, I just think that I don't know. I feel like I. I don't have any research on people and how much sleep they need. I just know I don't need that much sleep. <laughs> I can go down, wake up, and just be pretty chill. You know. Um. Work. Um, but I do think that it is, I'm not going to call it a superpower of mine, but you know, so listen, why don't we take this opportunity to guide our listeners through a meditation? I don't know how guided meditation works. I've never done one. Okay. Let's, let's start by you shutting the hell up. Let's <laughs> start with that. Thank you all. Thank you. So I want you all to just sit, please, uh, sit with your hands by your side in a chair. Well, okay, before, before we, start, we should like, we your, should like oh, okay. okay, I guess we're just going to stop them. Go ahead. I, could we we kind of just like, like, let's, let's, guys, now you want everyone to get in the space because we're going to guide you through a meditation. Okay. So, and it doesn't start with you like, clear your mind. Like, isn't it all of that? Well, I'm, I'm doing, you keep interrupting me. I'm, I am trying to guide the meditation, but you keep <laughs> jumping in, asking me how to do it instead of figuring out how to do it. So I want you to start by sitting in an upright position in a chair on the floor, on the bed, Um, but make sure that you're comfortable. You don't want to feel any tension. You want to be able to lean against something so that you can, you're not actually carrying any of your own weight. And if you want, you can also lie flat on your bed or on your floor, as long as you feel free and not like you have to support your body weight. Oh, also, I think that we should go back and forth. So we kind of like, this is a, a guide, a, a double guided meditation. Okay, your, your turn. And now that you're on this space and you are feeling, I want, you to be, I want you to become fully aware of your body. Become fully aware of your mind. I want you to breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in through your nose. 
Breathe out through your mouth. <sighs> now that you've regulated your breathing, try your best to keep that going at a regular at regular intervals until it becomes second nature. And now, I want you to just think about your fingertips. Think about your pinky finger. Don't move it. Just think about the tip of your pinky. And do you feel that energy in your pinky? Now let the energy travel over to your ring finger. You should feel a little tingle in both your ring finger and your pinky finger. And now your middle finger, the three fingers should all be tingling on both hands, your pointer finger, and now your thumb. Yes. Now I want you to just imagine that there's, that there's light coming out of the tips of your fingers illuminating the room also your eyes should be closed we forgot to say that your eyes should be closed by now illuminating the room you can feel that light traveling up through your fingers traveling up through your wrist your forearms your elbows your shoulders now those are your shoulders just give your shoulders a little shrug a little roll think front to back just give your shoulders a little roll now push them back you can feel that in your chest you feel your chest tightening Take a really deep breath. And then you let it out. And then I want you to really let your mind go. I don't want you to think about where it should go. Just let it go. You might be thinking about nothing. You might be seeing something. You might be at a beach. You might be in the desert. You might be floating amongst the clouds. You might be sitting on a mound. Wherever you are, just let your body go. Just let your mind go. I want you to think about letting everything go. Now, I want you to just do me a favor, and if you're not sitting up already, Go ahead and sit up. Sit up, give yourself a little wiggle. Just experience your body, feel your body, feel how it feels to be back in your body now that you've done this slight uh, meditation. Now I want you to put your all of your fingers to each other, put your pinky to your pinky, your thumb to your thumb, all of your fingers to each other. Now put your palms to each other, okay? Keep your fingers closed. You wanna keep your fingers completely closed. Now, try your best, if you can, to get your elbows as close to each other as possible and lean your hands forward. Now clap. It's tight, isn't it? Great. How was that meditation for everyone? Wait, wait, wait. Did you all feel relaxed? No, we're not done. And now you're, no, we are. and now you're standing up. You're the worst at improv. <laughs> this is horrible. You're, the you're, worst you're standing up. Bob, please, sleepy voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and stop coughing. Please stop coughing. And then you stand up. I want you to bend over as far as you can. Look down at your toes. And slowly let your body stand up vertebrae by vertebrae. Feeling each disc locking back into place. But not too tight. Stand up. Breathe in one more time. And out. I, mean, I feel like it had a really great ending, and then you just like added that last part. It was like it was like a it was like a good ending. We weren't standing up; we were still sitting down. Your meditation doesn't have to end with standing. Also, not everyone can stand. Wow. <laughs> so you so you're only meditating if you can stand. Whoa, oh my God. So you think everyone else is just stuck meditating? Yikes! <laughs> Yikes on bikes. You know, I hear all these stories of people who get hypnotized to stop smoking. And it sounds so successful. Like, I mean, I haven't heard a few stories that it hasn't worked, but oftentimes when I hear a list, I've heard it on like a few podcasts now, once on Nicole Byers' podcast on Chelsea Handler's and some interview I watched recently. And like people really be getting healed through hypnosis. I'm like, maybe I should try hypno hypnotizing myself. To what, just like stop being a bitch? To get a better fucking best friend. How I can, how, how, how I can be more discerning. Yeah, who 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 are you um, trying to use for the for this position? You know, because I would like to have have a talk with them and let them know what really all comes with 
this uh, quote unquote position. They should know. People have the right to know. Not not one position, all positions. Bzz. You know what? Where's like, that from? From the Fifth Element. I'm. They need to do a remake. I think we should do a remake of Fifth Element. Why? Because I want to see it again, like with like. Do, it, does the movie not exist anymore? The what? Does the movie not exist anymore? It does, but I feel like there could be like a really cool new version of it. Who's gonna play, play Chris Tucker's part? I mean, there's only one correct. There's only one correct answer. Um, that that guy that does the impression, the black guy, the funny black guy, he does he does Eddie Murphy really well. Chris Rock, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know his name. His name is um, he's from SNL. Yeah, Jay Farrow. Jay Farrow. But that's not the correct answer. The correct answer is Lil Nas X. No, 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 no. You hate you hate Montero. Why do you hate Montero? First of all, we don't know if if, if Lil Nas can act yet. We do. We've we've seen Lil Nas X act. Like in like a feature film or like a, on the silver screen, like something like that. Oh, so it has to be. So it's not acting unless it's in the. I the mean, I think of, wow. it's the, that's that's putting a lot on his shoulders to have him do such an iconic role and having having no roles before. Well, I believe in him. What? I believe in him. He can do Ruby Rod. I believe in Lil Nas X. Corbin Montero. Who who would, who would play Bruce Willis? I have to keep it a buck with you. I have not seen. The Fifth Element in oh. probably ten years, and I've and I've only seen it one time. What The Fifth Element is one of my favorite movies of all time. I've only seen The Fifth Element one time. I don't have a lot of information about this film. Um, wait, who did the, didn't someone like super famous do the costume design for it? Can you, can you Google who did the costume design for The Fifth Element? Yeah, it was Mugler. Yeah, Mugler. Mugler did the costume design for Fifth Element. Yeah. What? I just remember being like, someone really big did the costume design for Fifth Element. I didn't know that. That's so cool. I'm sorry. I, it was Jean Paul Gaultier. My bad. Gaultier. But just every bit as big. I know. Gaultier that, that is, is every bit as big. big. That is as big. But I was like, heck, not, not, a, not, a, not a man for it. Not you disappointed in Jean Paul. Not you disappointed in Jean Paul Gaultier. Then where are your standards? If Jean-Paul Gaultier is a letdown to you, no, my word. Jean-Paul Gaultier is fierce, but I mean, Mugler is just... I met Jean-Paul Gaultier. Where? At the Madonna? Yeah, you know, he does. He's uh, He famously did Madonna's cone bra. Why don't you and, have to do a uh, podcast? You know, I don't remember uh, having a conversation with him because I didn't, um, but he's very tall. He's taller than I thought he would be. That I can say. He's too, is he taller than you? I think he's my height or a little bit taller, maybe. Work. Maybe he had on some big boots or something, but he, big boots. But he was big, big boots. He has, um, he has, he also, has. someone commented You're that screaming. Someone commented that I made up that Nicki Minaj was laying on her stomach while performing "Everybody." And y'all, it's literally on the internet. You can just Google it yourself. It's a Nicki Minaj on her stomach, kicking her heels, going body, body, body. Yeah. Everyone I is did up. it quietly. Everyone is up. Do you know, you know what Nicki Minaj does? I love that. What this thing? That should be funny. That should be really funny. Um, I went to go see Ocean Kelly last night at a park called Felix. Okay, Ocean Felix Kelly's said. titties look so real. I saw the your story. I was like, come on, titties. Let me see this. I guess some people just happen to be the color that they make boobs in the world. The boobs I wear for uh, the boobs that I wear for the Madonna tour okay. are really good, but they're also custom painted by the guy who did Raja's infamous light outfit. You were supposed to give me his that didn't you that. give it to me. Did she win that episode? No. Hmm. Uh, Jinx did. That was a good outfit too. What well, what was the challenge that week though? Do you it remember by any chance? Roast. Oh, that's that's why. Jinx did a good job on the roast. Yeah. Let's just be cousins. Let's just be cousins is one of the best jokes. I'm so like I'm so Structurally speaking. 
I didn't get to see her and Ben show. It looks so good. I've, I've never got to see the Christmas show. And I was in Iceland when it came to LA. Where were you this last time? Oh, in Iceland? I in Iceland, yeah. And the last year, I don't know. And, then, and you, couldn't, you couldn't get on a plane and go see it somewhere? Like the planes are broken? I couldn't. Not in my time. I just had like, to go like, anywhere. Like all the planes are broken and stuff? Yeah, they were all broke. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't know. I didn't know every plane in America was broken, so you couldn't. Every single last one. Oh my God, that's so upsetting. Have you seen this viral video of those two white guys going to Fort Lauderdale talking about Dolly and Shelly, the girls? Have you seen this? <laughs> the girls, the girls. Dolly. You don't care about the girls? <laughs> the girls. Dolly and Shelly, that's all I'm saying. Dolly and Shelly. No, Shelly and Dolly. Shelly and Dolly. Shelly and Dolly. It has to be their pets or something. See? fucking. I, I, I bet you they're fucking dogs. I bet you they're fucking dogs. This woman turns around and goes... He, this woman sitting in a, in a wheelchair, and he goes to her. I and I love dogs, and she says something. She goes, "Fuck you, bitch!" And I was like, "Jesus!" Those, those, those so no, the the one who was going crazy, the one who went around said, "Hey, everyone, what airline? America? What airline is it? America? It looks like American, American, yeah." And then this lady in a wheelchair is like, or I mean, it's a, one of those like wheelchairs that, that, that they have at the uh, Assisted. airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she's like saying something to him. And then it, 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 he's like, he's staring, he goes, and I love dogs. And then the dog's sitting directly next to her. And then she says something that just sends him and he goes, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> I knew, I like, knew had to, I knew it was about dogs, of course. Well, well, I don't know that it's not confirmed. It's not confirmed that they are dogs. It's just weird that he all of a sudden was like, and I love dogs. Trust me, I love dogs. Well, I'm, I know I'm saying, I bet you it's about dogs. I will, will, I will, I will stand 10 toes down and bet that it's about his dogs. dogs Do you think those dogs are just back there pooping and peeing in, in, inside this person's house? Mm -hmm. That's why he well, wouldn't say this. People who have small dogs put down little pee pee poo poo pads in their house. No, no, that is fucking disgusting. I'm sorry. No. People who put, people who have small dogs. I've this is the thing I've seen across cultures, putting down the pee pee poo poo pads mm -mm. in the house for the dogs to use. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And that is what I will say. I did once. Well, at one time, someone stayed at my house. And their dog is shitting Monet. People are. Yeah, I want to tell you, Bob sleep. was so over. Bob was like, this bitch has a dog fucking shitting and pissing on my floor, fucking damaging my floor. <laughs> Literally, the dog's just peeing, shitting and peeing in the house. <laughs> and this person was the color of my palm, well, Monet's palm. Um, <laughs> so that's a little bit of that's a little bit of evidence toward your thing that you were saying. And then I had to throw out my rug my living room rug and which I which I just was so dis disheartened I never bought another living room rug and that while I was in that whole place I just feet freezing just feet freezing in my own home so we were somewhere recently and Bob goes I went to see the color purple with Andy if I was doing some bit and Bob goes Monet you gonna let a turn to, turn to, turn to reference Andy I was like Bob your hands are the, that side of your head is fully brown you are talking about it's Latin, Andy Latinx <laughs> Okay, your hands are particularly light skinned. That's true. Every black person that I know has hands like this. You keep saying everybody. What about what about Uncle Steve? What about my brother? Okay, your what mom, about my mother? The, what about me? Is, is is your mom is your mom's palm this this color? Not 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 the not your hand color. Let me see. Is she around? My mother has stepped. She stepped uh, out of the room. Well, all the black people I know, and I, will not and I will not parade my mother's hands around for your amusement. Arcia's hands are this color. Dewan's hands are this color. Naomi's hands are this color. Okay, Naomi is the the bitch. Naomi's skin is that color. <laughs> bitch, Naomi is light skinned. Um, Day's hands are this color. I don't know if they are. They are. There are lots of people who have hands, this, black people with hands this color. I'm sure, but you saying that my is particularly white is false. It's not true. It, that now that is true. Your hand is particularly white. Lupita and Yanga. I don't know. I don't, I don't know Lupita. I don't know her. Boom. And you don't. And you also don't know Martha P. Johnson either. But you dragged her name into a conversation earlier, didn't you? <laughs> to prove a point, didn't you? <laughs> I can't wait till some, some like the, 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 like someone, like some 
fan who works over at the oh, U.S. Census. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't wait until some fan who works over the U.S. Census drops the thousands of Kamikas in New York. It's going to be delicious. Okay, okay. Versus the millions of Marthas in New York. You yes. think they're no? I'm talking about Mississippi. So you telling me you think that out of the three million people in in um in Mississippi, over a million of them, you think a third of the people in Mississippi are Marthas? I did not say that. I said the millions in New York is what I said. I didn't. We're, we're talking about Marthas. In, we're talking about Marthas in Mississippi and Kamikas in New York. And what's the, and what and what what is the question? You're like there's so you're like you're saying that you think that you have some irrefutable evidence that doesn't exist that you can't find that. Um, per capita, there are more Marthas in Mississippi than there are Kamikas no, in New York. I said that there are more Marthas per capita in Mississippi than Kamikas in Mississippi. That's what I'm saying. And the same in New York. And the same in Mississippi. In no, I'm talking about Marthas, Mississippi, Kamikas, New York. It's not fair to do Marthas and Kamikas both in Mississippi. That's not fair. Yes, it is because we're trying to. I, my point is that there are more Marthas than Kamikas, where in whatever state, whatever country, whatever city. If per capita. Do, per capita. If you do the amount, of, if you count the amount, of, the amount of Marthas per capita in Mississippi, the amount of Kamikas per capita in, in Mississippi, they will always, every but it's not, time. No, it needs to be, it needs to be Martha's Mississippi, Kamikas, New York. It's not fair for you to do Martha and Kamikas yes, both in per capita. Mississippi. Per capita means, yes, if, 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 if we're doing population, I, no, we're doing per capita. So that is fair. That's what I'm saying. Martha's per capita in Mississippi, Kamikas per capita in New York. That's no, what I'm saying. we're saying the same city because I'm saying that in the same city. And I'm telling you that's not fair. That's, that's, that's not like, fair. That's, that's like saying, it, that's like me saying, I promise you there's more Muhammad's per capita in Iran than there are Joseph's. I promise you. And that is my irrefutable proof, which by the way, there are more Muhammad's than any name in the world. Muhammad is literally the most common name in the world. But the fact there will be more Muhammad's in Iran than there are Muhammad's per capita in New York City it's just proof that Muhammad is a very common name in Arabic so countries. That's, so to your point, that's why you should you should do the same name in the same city. So you're saying are they so no, but you have to do thing, you, you have, have to do Muhammad's no. per capita in Iran versus Jose's per capita in, in Mexico. No, no, because because Kamika is not a name by that's different. You're trying to do a name by ethnicity. And of course, like Muhammad's are going to be plentiful in Fucking, well, there's more Muhammad than any name in the world. Muhammad's the most common name in the world. That's what I'm saying. That so the fairest, the fairest way to do this is doing per capita same city, the different two names in the same city. But that doesn't work because certain names are in more places than other names. You will find, in my opinion, which I don't, I'm assuming this is just an assumption. There's probably more Kamikas in New York per capita than there are Kamikas in Mississippi per capita, which is why I'm saying you'd have so to you're, take. You're saying there are more Kamikas where? In New York per capita, than there are Kamikas in Mississippi. So what you could do is you could take the amount of Jose's in Mexico and compare them to the amount of Muhammad's in Iran. That's more fair than trying to prepare the Jose's in Iran versus the Muhammad's in Iran. But we're arguing two different things. Okay, we, we're, now we're just going back and forth. We are in an hour. I'm just, and I'm just saying that yours isn't fair. No, I'm saying yours isn't fair because I'm not debating whether there are more Kamikas in, 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 in Mississippi or New York. I'm just saying that Martha is a more common name across the board. So the, or the fairest way is to take maybe three different states in America, fucking Oregon, Mississippi. Sleepy boys, sleepy boys. Oh. Oregon. Please, money, we're almost done, but you still can't wake people up, okay? Oregon, Mississippi, and New York, and you do the amount Kamika versus Martha in each one of them, and that would be a fair way to say to get it. I've already I've, I've heard your thesis and I disagree with it. Before, I disagree I, before yours, we nigga. go, okay, congratulations. Before we go, I um will say one last thing. What? Actually, I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I have nothing. Well, listen, guys, thank you for listening to our sleepy um our sleepy time podcast we hope that you are now sleeping and we'll see you next time here at sibling rivalry goodbye everyone